lot going through his mind as well. Certainly excited. And we are ready for the Jerome Tang era at Kansas State. Kip Kissinger will toss it up. And the tip controlled by Texas Rio Grande Valley. Light K State, 13 newcomers on this roster. This is Will Johnston, a good-looking point guard that will lead things for Matt Figgers' club. I watch number one, Justin Johnson. He's the returning starter, a very good player. Second team all-whack last year. He's the guy they want to score the basketball. And a charge drawn on the first possession as Keontae Johnson steps in. Good help defense by K-State. They know they've got to watch the drive from Johnson, who creates a lot of foul situations. And here's a look at K-State starting five. Cam Carter playing so well during preseason camp, working himself into the starting lineup in that backcourt along with returning Marquise Noel. Inside, David Gasson, and he'll head to the free throw line. So Gasson getting the start tonight, and Stan, he's only been here a couple of weeks, so impressive that he has worked him way, his, his way into the lineup. Yes, it is, uh, and they have Desi Seals as well hasn't been here very long working his way in but coach Tang has got so many new players that he's saying hey jump aboard everybody on the team is working together as a family and that has helped a lot with David Gasson's capability to be a starter here in the opener tonight transfer out of Virginia Tech and very active in that exhibition went over Washburn had eight points and five rebounds and he has the first points of the night for Kansas State in a nice run to Virginia Tech last year and he played some good basketball and played some pressure basketball. And the thing that Coach Tang talked about with all the players that he brings in, he wants them to have winning experience. If it's high school state championships, if it's college NCAA tournament success, that's the kind of player he wants. And David Gasson fits that mold. Rio Grande Valley had an exhibition as well. They destroyed Concordia University, 136 to 81. This is a team that wants to get up and down the floor in transition. Three-pointer from the corner won't go. And Tomlin has the board. K-State looking to run. Carter bounces it inside, and it's stolen away. Turnovers was one of the few issues K-State had the other night against Washburn. Both these teams want to get up and down the court, no doubt about it. Who will be able to get back on defense? It'll be a big story in this game. Tomlin gets a piece of that. Noel trying to get downhill. Three from the corner for Carter off the back rim. And a strong rebound here by Justin Johnson. And on the tie-up, K-State will keep it. K-State was so good on the offensive boards in their first game in the exhibition, attacking with some athleticism. And here is an example where you see Keontae Johnson fighting, and you get a jump ball. Man-to-man -man defense is what you'll see from UTRGV. K-State will play man-to-man -man probably all the time, but they'll do a lot more switching. It'll be interesting to see how that attack affects the offense that UTRGV is trying to run. A little bit of a clear out here for Tomlin, and on the reverse, he comes up empty. Well defended there by UTRGV. Watch UTRGV, they love to get to high-low situations. K-State, though, into passing lanes, not letting them run their offense, and creates a turnover right there. And that was one of Matt Figger's concerns was can they run their stuff in the half court stand as we look at some keys to victory now. Well, for UTRGV, they need to share the basketball. In their exhibition game, they had 41 assists. They like working together. They'll play 10 players. they got to handle the road atmosphere. This is a Big 12 atmosphere, a lot of students. And for K-State, K-State's got to limit the turnovers. This thing we talked about already. Just cut that out of your game and play with high energy, and K-State expects very good results. Carter long on the three, weak side board to Gasson. Noel measures. And he hits. Exactly what K-State wants to do. You get a rebound, kick it to the three-point shooter, stepping into the shot, catching it in his shooting pocket, and knocking it down, Marquise Noel. Johnson nearly forcing another turnover. Three from the corner won't drop for the Vaqueros. Tomlin trying to run down the loose ball and a whistle here. 
And he'll say Tomlin had a piece of the ball that was out of bounds. And K-State will get a couple substitutions here with Ish Masood and Desi Sills coming in. Now, good hustle right here. Just had his foot out of bounds while he was touching the basketball. That'll give the ball back to UTRGV. But look at the substitutions already for K-State. The belief that they have in their players. They have decided after the exhibition who they're going to redshirt. And one of the guys will be Jarrell Colbert, a big guy who showed a lot of athleticism. He will not be playing. So you're basically looking at 10 guys to be deep in the rotation. And early in the game, a lot of guys getting an opportunity. Weave action from UTRGV. Noel trying to fight over the ball screen. Open three from the top. Won't go off the glass, but an offensive rebound. They like shooting the three ball. If they can get it inside and the high low, they'll do that, but shoot the three otherwise. And this one rattles home. The lefty and the Vaqueros have their first points of the evening. Sherman Brashear. Pretty much everybody scored in double figures that played for Rio Grande Valley in their exhibition. As I said, they put up 136 points. Brashear had 16 in that win. 52 baskets, 41 assists. They moved the ball well. Johnson lost a handle. Ish Masood off the bench for three, and he rips it. Not as if he brought it up. In this case, they fumbled the ball around a little bit, but at the end, Marquise Noel just kept his composure, gave a good pass across court for the open three. Good to see Masood knock down that first three of the year. And here's a turnover. Cats want to run. Noel looking for Desi. That's a two. And an over the back foul on Ish Masood. You can tell it's regular season as we're able to be so close to these young athletes. There's some hard breathing. It's not that they're not in great shape, but boy, they're pushing it right now. And there's a new level of intensity that you didn't see in an exhibition. Miami Nijiola in for the Wildcats along with Ty Key Green. foul on Masood, so he quickly picks up two fouls. But not before he buries a three, including one from Noel, and the Cats lead it here, eight to three. Of rebounds, K-State playing with energy to start the game. UTRGV. Basketball here, and they're pretty good on these inbounds plays. They will look to score, and well defended there by Bebe. Head coach Matt Figure will call as many plays as he can. He wants his team to run and to find scores quick at the rim or three-pointers, but after that, he'll start calling things, including these inbound plays. Darius Ward on the runner won't fall. Sills clears the rebound for K-State. Johnson tried to feed it inside and threw it away. Well, just good defense by Dimas um, Door, number 10, just blocking his way, not, not allowing him to get to the basket. A little high-low action here. And Johnson battles his way to the rebound, and he's fouled. Aaron Freeman accidentally ran into him. Ball's loose on the floor. So, Stan, a little uh, series history here. K-State leads 3-0. All three of those games taking place when UTRGV was known as Texas Pan American, including the first game played back in 1984, and Lon Kruger was the coach of Pan American, played against or coached against his old coach, Jack Hartman. Kruger went 52-59 and there in four years, won 20 games in his last season at Pan American, and then, of course, took over for Jack Hartman. Well, the thing about that game, when you had Long Kruger going against Jack Hartman, is Long Kruger left as an assistant to Jack when he went there to Pan American, and they matched up right away. It was a game that K-State won. And Long Kruger's had a storied career. There's been other coaches there at Pan American, including Mark Adams, the head coach at Texas Tech right now. Carter the steal ahead to Desi Sills, who's fouled. Buckets have been hard to come by in the paint for both teams. 
This time Sills in transition will get to the free throw line. So Stan, how about your backup guards here for Jerome Tang are a couple of senior transfers, Desi Sills and Tyke Green each have over 1,100 career points at the Division I level. That says a lot about your guard play. Yeah, no doubt about it, and you need great guard play to be successful in college basketball. And Dorian fin uh, Finister will not redshirt, so we'll see him tonight. Stan did mention Jarrell Colbert plans to redshirt, as does Anthony Thomas and Taj Manning, but Dorian Finister will be the fifth guard for Jerome Tang. We saw him do, doing some good things in the exhibition. A young man from New Orleans, Louisiana, freshman. State, four of four from the free throw line, and the Cats really getting out and overplaying these passes to the wing. Showing their quickness and their confidence. You don't want to go after steals and then not get it, not tap the ball away, because then you have your defense in a bad situation and break down. So they're only doing it when they believe they can get there. Johnson trying to get downhill on Keontae Johnson and just dribbles it out of bounds. Johnson 18.8 a year ago at conference play in the WAC. Second leading scorer in the WAC last year. You see ball screen. He liked to have dive from the top to get someone that he don't get it. But In a half-court set, you don't see that capability very often to just drive in and throw it down. Keontae lines up a three. And K-State explodes for five quick points, including a monster jam from Tyke Green. You're shooting the three-pointers. You want to make sure you understand where the pass is coming from. And the more you can pass the ball from inside the arc out so the guy facing up, it's much better. Your percentage knocking down threes is much higher when you're catching the ball inside out. So K-State's done that in two of their three-point makes. You see your part GV not being able to run good offense yet. It seemed a little hurried as K-State's defense locks down. They swing it. Travel and somehow they get it to Dima Zador for two. Justin Johnson, when he drives, he's going to have a lot of attention paid to him. And when he spun, he saw someone wide open underneath the basket. And that was better ball movement by UTRGV. Johnson, another three. The back threes from Keontae Johnson. So you go back to his last full season in Florida, he had 38% of his threes. He can knock them down. Johnson, the lob, the Matthew Sills. And this place is on fire right now. Fast breaking. How about the guard dunking it? Another good defensive play. And Carter. Falls down. Johnson's going to try another one. Heat check. Not this time. Green above everybody to pull down the rebound. And a tie-up will send it the other way. But K-State has got this place jumping right now. Speed. Intensity down the court. Knocking down some threes help as well. K-State off to a great start. But the athleticism, the purpose, everybody spring down the court. And you have no slow big guys. Everybody can run who's on the floor for the Wildcats. Johnson back in there with the point. C.J. Jackson for three. Great block out there by K-State. No chance for an offensive rebound from the opponent. Noel bounced inside to Tomlin. He's got his first two. Make Ron Tomlin ready for the basketball along the baseline. Marquise averaged four assists, or correction, five assists a game last year. And a nice little pass there to Tomlin.
watch these two set up in their half court, and you're wondering, what am I watching? Because it's so used to speed. Gasson steps out and hits for three. Fifth triple of the night for Kansas State. Four different players contributing with three-point makes already. Johnson with a good pass. The contest, though, from Gasson. Chanou misses inside. Good defense by the Wildcats. Johnson, not this time, and pulled down by the seven-footer. He can shoot threes, but Keontae Johnson so comfortable driving toward the basket. Sharing the ball, and I think we've seen all three so far. Eight assists already for the Wildcats on nine makes. 11 points off turnovers so the defense leading to scoring. And then just great shooting from the outside. K-State is 5-8 from behind the arc to start the game. Let's go check in with our sideline reporter, Jasmine Halliburton. Hey guys, so I was just listening to the huddle and the first thing Coach Dowling was actually talking to the bench about saying we celebrate too much, so he wants them to calm down on that end. And also Coach Tang, he wrote poise in the paint, so he's talking about more poise and more calmness inside the paint, guys. All right, thanks, Jasmine. <laughs> they are definitely hyped. How could you not be? Kick off the regular season with a bunch of new teammates. Student section here, this is part of a doubleheader. K-State's women's basketball team won their opening game just before this game. So it's been a basketball party already tonight, and there's still 10-23 left in the first half. Yeah, congratulations to Jeff Mitty getting a 600th career win tonight. As the Wildcats easily knocked off Central Arkansas in the opener, 83-43. Want to know for these ladies. Now they'll head to Milwaukee and they will play Wisconsin in the Milwaukee Brewers baseball stadium. Absolutely. Yeah. Major League Baseball Park. The court will be, I believe, centered somewhere near where home plate would be. I don't know how they'll put the stands around it yet, but a unique doubleheader, a women's basketball game and then a men's basketball game will be played there Friday night. Dorian Finister in there now, getting his first minutes for the true freshman, and Noel loses the handle on that. An unforced error from the senior point guard. Yeah, he started to play with one hand right there. Coach Tang will say, no, no, you don't need to do that. You don't need to jump, and you don't need to use just one hand. Use both. Johnston lets it fly over the top of Noel, and it's been one and done. On this end for the Vaquero. He's doing a great job clearing the boards. And there you see Finister in the ball game. Dorian Finister, number 24, a freshman. Look at the nasty crossover. And he gets the roll. Desi's got six. Big time one-on-one -on -one move. Senior out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. Played at both Arkansas and Arkansas State. He was on that Elite Eight team a few years ago. More winning from K-State players. Well, it is a bit tough sledding in the paint here for the Vaqueros. And Kim Kissinger stops play. A three-second violation. Watch this. Things cleared out. Got one-on-one. -on -one. Help defense does not come strong. Just stayed back, and he was able to stop and pop. You don't see a lot of guys get to that mid-range shot in college basketball now. Boy, he looked comfortable doing it there. Ten to shoot for Noel. 
kick out to Gasson. That one's an air ball. Tomlin's there with the put back, and that's a goal 10. Now off the backboard, the ball's touched. And this shot is offense in basketball, Ben. So you need to own that offside block position. You get there, and the shot doesn't go in. You have the highest percentage chance of getting the basketball. And if you do, you can go right back up and score, and you see it happen right there. Tomlin, Seals, and Johnson all with six for K-State. Desi over the top gets the steal, but a little bit of body as well to pick up the foul. University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, loves to isolate in that high-low look, and they got a chance to do that there. They'll do it with different players. It's not just big to big. That figure trying to find something to get a little traction because these players, I believe, are in shock. Things went so easily in their exhibition game against Concordia. We talked about how many points they put up. They they were pressed. They didn't have to set their offense at all. They were able to run, and then now here they're ha having a struggle running their stuff. Yeah, it's got to feel like K-State's got six guys out <laughs> there on the floor playing defense against them. It's a learning experience. Both these teams have hardly any players coming back from their last season's group. It's interesting, though. So you've got K-State pick for last, you know, whatever, <laughs> in the Big 12. Uh, they're always going to pick the new guy last, right? Uh, Texas Rio Grande Valley, they were picked last in the WAC. But it was interesting, I'm talking to both coaches, we've heard both coaches tell us, I really like my talent. Now, we've seen it from K-State tonight, not so much from Rio Grande Valley, but Matt Figure does like this team. We'll see if they can get settled down here a little bit. Yeah, the wax made of made up of 13 teams right now, and they were picked last, but how could you expect them to be evaluated with all these new players? And he has a lot more confidence in where they're going to be. Oh, there's a nice move. Count that and the foul. And Daylon Williams splits two defenders and gets all the way to the rack. Well, he has capability of shooting a three ball, but he also feels comfortable. He looked like he was long jumping right there. And even though you might think the defender, David Gasson, set, his foot is on the arc. And that's an automatic foul against the defense. He's got to be a couple inches further out to get an offensive charge call. First foul on Gasson. And Williams, a junior from Los Angeles, completes the three-point play. And his dad, John, played in the NBA for nine years. Wow. So he's got the right bloodlines. He's played at Cleveland State earlier in his career, just came from southern Idaho. Tomlin with the pull-up. One of the few times you see UTRGV get a clean rebound. That's poked away, retrieved by Will Johnston. State switching on the perimeter. And we'll switch four of the positions and sometimes all five. Justin Johnson on the attack. Good defense again by K-State. He did some yeoman's work to get his shot anywhere near being able to go in, going through double teams, but ends up missing. Carter, nice pocket pass down to Gasson, but he can't finish. Headed to break, Kansas State 31 to 10 in the season opener. All this new talent to the roster. Yeah, they did it uh, in an excellent way because they had purpose and they had patience, which is not easy to do. But these guys have been working together so well, even though they haven't all been on the same staff, they've known each other, have the same values. Great coaches and Coach Tang got the job. He knew exactly who he wanted to call. Johnson. How about that coaching staff making a call out of the timeout, leading to the alley oop dunk on the baseline? Johnson climbing the ladder and served up perfectly by Noel. Bebe with the rebound. Carter transition three, back rims it. Jasmine was in the huddle the last time out. Let's check in with her as Noel misses the reverse. Jasmine, what do you have for us? Well, what I got from Coach Tang in that sideline, he was wanting to roll hard to the basket, and obviously that happened with that dunk there. And he's also saying that we've made mistakes and wants them to stay poised and be stout defensively. 
Great effort there by Bebe. Tang didn't like the call. And if you come down with the basketball and then fall to the ground, you have a travel. If you are already diving toward the ground and don't have your feet set, it will let you go to the ground. They interpret it as a travel. Two teams may not be doing everything perfectly, but the energy level for both very high. KSH just more effective at finishing, getting the ball to the rim for Tones. Holloman between two defenders gets bumped and fouled. He'll shoot two. But Dante Holloman, freshman from the Camister, Oklahoma, four star recruit, and scored over 2,300 career points. So nice addition for Matt Figure to pick him up as a freshman. He had a little coaching. Uh, that was done well by his dad and his high school coach, but they happen to be the same person. So you got to talk a little basketball at home as coach well. Side. Yes, his dad will did a good job teaching this young man how to play basketball. This is a team that likes to get to the free throw line. That's one of the things that they really have done well in that first year of that figure. Yeah, they, they were a top 10 in the country last year in free throw attempts, but Holloman comes up empty. And that's easier to get done when you have Justin Johnson. He's so good going to the rim. Ball movement, triple from the corner. Johnson's in double figures. He's got 11. And three three players. Great ball movement there. Ball reversal, wide open shot. Great offense in that half court set. Another steal by the Cats. Noel Johnson into Bay Bay and he's fouled. Yep, we got an out of bounds. Oh, okay. Keontae Johnson went up to catch the basketball, realized that he had to come down before he could make the pass, but he's so deep he ended up hitting the baseline before he threw the next pass. Good overplay and getting another steal for the Wildcats. Nine turnovers in this first half. Five of those steals. Foul on the perimeter on Green. Tight team Green. foul, so one and one opportunity here for the Vaqueros. Justin Johnson really has an ability to find his way to the rim. Creates fouls very easily. Well, he was certainly the focal point of the scouting report. Having a career high last year, 38 in a game against Cal Baptist, the team that's in the whack. He had three games over 30 points last year, nine over 20, three double doubles. And that's why he's second team all whack conference. And he's got more talent around him right now. We're excited about the season. He's still the go-to guy. Double high ball screen. Johnson, kick out to Noel. He'll launch for three and hit. It's a tough shot right there because the action was exactly what you want. Drive and pitch, but the ball was not delivered perfectly. He had to reload that then and still able to knock down that beautiful three-point shot. His range is deep as well as we saw last season. Shot 35% from downtown a year ago. And has two already denied in the opener. Shot clock at five. Johnson, step back three, and he buries it. There's the talent on display there for Justin Johnson. And right now doing a little too much talking. Officials stopping him and saying, hey. Officials can't say look at the scoreboard. Though. Green's turn. Beautiful. Brought some rain with that one. And yet another Wildcat with the three. Eight three-point makes, probably what most teams would average in a game the Wildcats have in the first half. 
Now Green was a great three-point shooter in Stony Brook last year, 43%. You saw it there. Wide open look from the corner. 42-17, K-State with the alley-oop, and Keontae's got 11. They went to play basketball in a closed scrimmage against SIU. They were able to get some great Kansas City barbecue and see one of the national uh, places where people come to see it's a famous Hall of Fame there, and uh, it's really a great experience to be able to go there. It's a great time for the players in addition to being able to play some ball. Green lines up a three, not this time, but the long rebound out to Carter. Buck O'Neill, the driving force behind the development of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, downtown Kansas City. Hall of Famer. Step through with the Euro step. Johnson unable to finish. Bebe's got the rebound. He's blocked and fouled. Offensive rebounding continue to be a big factor. Good drive. Deontay Johnson normally can get this to go. Has the ability to spin it off his fingertips. Either one. You see the strength of John Chanu, number 33, kind of just putting his hands up, but bodying Bebe. Six-year player out of Nigeria, two years at Stetson, two years at Arkansas, last year at Hofstra. And had one of his biggest games for Hofstra against Arkansas last year, his former team. He had 18 points and 14 rebounds in a game against the Hogs. He stays a small world once in a while, but he was a teammate with Desi Sills at Arkansas. And now they're back together at K-State. Post up here, K-State comes with a double team. And that's thrown away. They tried to get Johnson down on the block, but Finister came from the weak side with a good double team, forcing the turnover. Yeah, even though K-State had two smaller players there, they did a good job of keeping their body together. When you get that double team, you do not want to separate because then an offensive player can step through and act like neither of you are there. Both those guys, good discipline, including a freshman, Dorian Finister. Good movement. Good, good catch right there on the pass that was too low. And out of bounds. K-State will keep it. Shot clock will not reset. So eight to go on the shot clock. You don't throw the ball in too often from this spot in the court. There's a lot of plays on the baseline. There's a lot at the top of the key area, but uh, not in the court. Desi trying to get downhill. Does a nice job of drawing the foul. He was almost able to get that thing to the basket. We had a long line. Lefty using his left hand. So Desi just got here a couple weeks ago, Stan. And one thing maybe that was missing in the locker room and at the practice practices on a daily basis was a real vocal leader and coming into that situation desi sills just kind of stepped up and that's his natural character is he's kind of just kind of a natural born leader and their own thing has just been loving his leadership and the energy and his ability to communicate to the rest of the players and bring a level of intensity competing in every practice he's saying to guys let's, let's get better you know let's, let's, let's go this drill five on five let's see who wins this game that's a charge Bebe was there to draw it great help defense right here gets set in plenty of time he did not chase his guy across the lane he saw the basketball just as they want Case State right now, 52% from the floor, 8 of 14 from 3, and 8 of 8 from the free throw line as they close in on 50 here in the first half. Aaron 
Freeman picks up the foul. Good ball movement by K-State again, getting the ball side to side. Freeman, the foul. Let's talk about that K-State defense a little bit. And the philosophy the coaches were going to use, they all came with great defensive backgrounds. But they had to get together and say, how are we going to play this? Every situation. You know, how are we going to play ball screens? How are we going to play three-point shooters? Closeouts. And they went through it all together and put together a combination defense that includes the best of what all of them like to do. And they started all learning the new language together to talk to the players that way. And boy, they have some options. You think about how great Baylor's defense has been since they've locked into that man-to-man -man all the way to a national championship. And then Malagy with Texas Tech and then on to Texas, known for Chris Beard's defense. And so it was a lot of fun for those coaches to get together and say, how are we going to do this? How are we going to lock down on the defensive end? That's where they want to start with. And they've so far executed very, very well. And Coach Matt Figger, who's been in a K-State assistant and went with Frank Martin to South Carolina, made it to that final four. And South Carolina has great appreciation for K-State. But right now, he likes his players, but he's saying, boys, Welcome to a different level of physicality than what we've been able to create in practice so far. Again, it is the first game of the year. Yeah, Jerome Tang, Matt Figger, very good friends from their days as assistant coaches in the Big 12. And one's got a national championship ring, the other one's got a Final Four ring. That's some good stuff right there. Williams having a good first half. He's got four. Coach Matt Figger right now is just looking for his players to settle down, not watch the scoreboard, to see if you can improve, play better basketball, find your way together, and leave this place with some confidence and continuity as you're trying to build your team. But on the other side, much of the same message from Jerome yeah. Tang. Do not look at the scoreboard. Play basketball. Finister spin move, tough shot. comes Williams, pretty moving to finish. Correction to Dante Holloman that time. Well, Woo. I wonder why he's a four-star recruit. Nice job on the dribble in traffic. And a good finish. And it hasn't been easy to finish because when we've seen UTRGV get shots close, not all, many of them have not gone down, but he made it look easy. Galen Gasson returns for Finister. And you get a chance to see Ish Masood get back in. He knocked down a three-pointer early, but he picked up those two quick fouls. He's been on the bench a little while. So many options with the versatility. Multiple guys that can play multiple positions for this team at both ends of the floor. And the way basketball is played right now, you don't have the big guys that are sluggish and physical down low that often. It's people who can run, shoot three-pointers. Too quick on the step there, and Sills called for the travel. And the more you can switch, the more you can become interchangeable on the defensive end, the better you are in this ball screen era. It's hard to fight under over those ball screens, but if you can just switch, you say, okay, you're dribbling to me, gotcha. But you can only do that to the level that you can stay with athleticism. case has got some big guys who can switch. Holloman on the strong take again. And you see that quick first step in the blow by from Holloman. Holloman's a freshman, but this is the way that UTRGV played last year under a bad figure. You talked about how many free throws they shot. Some of the best in the country. And so he's going to fit right into that style. Something Casey wants to work on right here. One minute left. How are you going to finish the half? chances to use the shot clock get two shots for one not so much in this situation right here but you want to execute very well to finish off a half and start the next half open look for Tomlin 
Kept alive on the weak side by Green, and Tomlin turns it over with the travel. He's taking the show some full court pressure here. Well, that's something we haven't seen at all, but boy, when you start thinking about the length and athleticism, what K State might be able to do with full court, three quarter court, half court traps. Yeah, all those things will be in the playbook, no doubt. Scoop shot, no good. K State can run or hold. Desi's going to get all the way to the rack. No need to hold for the final shot if you can get an easy layup. At the other end, though, a Euro step is finished by C.J. Jackson. Now K-State can get the last shot. Sills to Green. Yeah! Ty Key Green with a buzzer beater. And what a way to end the first 20 minutes of the Jerome Tang era. Key to that shot is... They had time to make the extra pass. That's what Jerome Tang is trying to teach these guys. It, these seconds go away very slowly. You can make another pass. Don't hurry. Get a good shot. Or back in Manhattan, but he had a good time here in Manhattan, seeing people, looking at the facilities, how much they've improved, getting around the environment that he loves at K-State, and then the tip-off started. He's like, uh-oh. This <laughs> is All the fun went right out of the window because... He was here when the Octagon of Doom was discussed a lot, and he felt like he was back with the wrong colors on. Yeah, he's like, he's probably thinking, well, this is the way we played when I was here yep. 10 years Tough ago. Tough defense leading to great offense. Open look for Keontae, not this time. Gasson battling for the rebound, and he commits the foul. So second half here, Stan, we saw him a little bit in the exhibition, K-State. Build a big lead against Washburn. Second half got pretty sloppy. How do you avoid that, and what do you look for if you're Jerome Tang in the second 20 minutes? Well, if I could do it right now, I would just erase the bottom part of the screen. So beautifully done. We can see the time and score. We're all used to that on our television screens. But for the K-State players and for UTRGV, they've just got to forget about this game. K-State's going to win this game. But can you get better right. throughout this half? K-State's going to be playing Friday night against a Pac-12 team at Cal. Can't waste any of this opportunity to play real basketball with fans in the stands. So you just cannot worry about the scoreboard. you got to keep your intensity. When they played Washburn, they got off to a good start in the exhibition. But in the second half, they got a little bit sloppy. Cannot have that happen tonight. Sherman Brashear with the bump on Carter. Yeah, talking about former K-State assistant coaches. K-State will see another one on Friday. Mark Fox, who was on Tom Asbury's staff. K-State played him uh, a few times when he was a head coach at Georgia, now at Cal. So K-State will match up against him on Friday out there on the left coast. He's got the ball to the baseline and good bounce pass right here and then realizing that he had an angle. Nice step through by Cam Carter. No travel. Didn't use a dribble. So he got the ball quickly because he could see the defender wasn't in position to stop him from getting to the basket. Carter yet to score tonight. He had a game high 13 in the exhibition against Washburn. You're not going to say that for very long or in very many games because he can score the basketball. And you've got a lot of new players for K-State. And what Coach Tang tried to do is not just get guys who have their last year of eligibility. He wanted a mixture. And here's one when you think about Cam Carter, only a sophomore. So he can be around here in this program for a while. And Jasmine has some more on Carter. Hey, guys. So Cam is more so on the quiet side and sometimes too quiet, but that's certainly not how he plays. He's a competitor. He said he's grimy and that he brings it every day in practice and he's going to make sure the team gets better. And Cam said, I always compete. I have confidence. If I thought somebody was better than me, I was going after him every day, no matter what. I was going to give it everything I had and I was going to take it from him. He's like that. And that's why he's in the starting lineup. He's earned it. Noel from NBA plus range. Double digit three point make for the Wildcats here in this ballgame. Great shooting. 
Good movement after they got the rebound with purpose to get the ball to Marquise Noel. He's a perfect three of three from downtown as Johnson is now into double digits with 11 for the Vaqueros. And he can take some physicality and still finish impressive. scoreboard is done. I think it's taken a little of the intensity away from UTRGV's defense. Tomlin uh, unable to find the mark. I've not seen him bury many outside shots yet in the exhibition and tonight, but certainly capable of it. You got to know that's coming. Good rebound there by Dalen Williams in a putback. We've seen K-State do that all night long. This time UTRGV gets it done. Keep the ball moving. Good movement without the ball. Carter, three. Rebound to Gasson. And it's taken away by Williams. Johnson, Euro, stepping the finish. What a finish that was with the second player coming. He made it look like he was going up and under. Got his left leg where it looked like he had to go to the other side of the basket, and yet he was able to lean back and stay on the right side. Impressive finish. Johnson, here comes the double team. Good ball movement around the perimeter. Open three for Carter. That's perfect. You get the double team, get it out, spin it around before they can retrace and get back and get an open three pointer. That's what we've seen him do throughout the practice sessions this year is knock down open threes. Good ball movement. And K-State has its 11th triple of the ball game. You see Keontae Johnson along the baseline. He could score from there. But with the double team there, he kicks it out. Two passes later, the extra pass to Cam Carter. And he's able to light that scoreboard up, Then No zero by his name anymore. Green and Sills in at the guard spots. Carter will stay in. Bebe and Masood in at the bigs. It's important for K-State to play well in this segment because this is where you're going to see Desi Sills play that point guard position. Johnson backing his way in. Left his feet too early. Just come in, be strong, keep your hands up. Had his hands in the right position, but got off of his feet. So you watch the help defense come. Fine. Ah, don't jump. You're going to get the foul. Good patience by a veteran player who has good offensive instincts. We're talking about consistency. They played 18 whack games last year, and he was in double figures in 17 of them. Leading the way with 13 here on the road tonight. Well, it's amazing when you think about how much he wants to have the basketball in his hands, how Justin Johnson will shoot the three ball, and he shot over 50% from the field. You don't, you don't see a lot of college players making over 50% from the field now. Missed from both. Sills there with the rebound. He's been fine as a free throw shooter as well. He's not a struggling free throw shooter, but those both missed. Good movement by K-State right now. They've been using this action a lot here in the second half. Maybe will take the jumper, and he hits. Six foot ten, face up shot. Carter with the foul. And a timeout, 61-32. This is Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. High percentage shooting with a lot of players involved. They say getting fast break baskets, but also Marquise Noel. He's got three three-pointers tonight for K-State. 61-32, offensive foul and wave off the bucket from Darius Ward. Third or fourth time K-State has drawn a charge tonight. They've had a good position on defense, playing the fundamentals well. Here is the third guy who got over, Ty Key Green. 
It looked like Darius Ward had done a nice job of splitting two Wildcats, but he had to go through three to get the shot off. No basket. Sills with 10. Green's got nine, so you get 19 points from your backup guards essentially tonight. And this is where Des is going to have to be good. Be good at the point guard when Marquise Noel isn't in the ball game. More good ball movement. Wide open three from Ish. Bang! Ish has his second three. And the three-point party continues. Uh, Jerome Tang's clap was clap, clap, and hard clap, clap. He loved it. That's exactly what they've been working on in practice. Johnson with the answer at the other end. 16 for Justin Johnson, who's having a big second half. As he splits the double team, Ish again leaves this one short. He didn't follow a shot, he would have had an offensive rebound. Foul before the block. Good transition there, and that's what Matt Figger wants from this team is to get out and run. And time able to beat K State down the floor as Carter commits the foul. He's got a great ability to Euro step, keep body control, flip it up on either side. He's really taken to the competition here in the second half. Raised his game. Ish Masood missed that shot, didn't come in to get the offer for rebound, and then when he didn't get the rebound, couldn't help him get back in case they were short of the other one. Dante Holloman had a good first half, I thought, for the freshman. Yeah, he did. He's had good minutes. Williams has had good minutes, but... Johnson having a really nice game here on the road tonight, working on a 17-point game. And making his free throw. Vaqueros, 12 of 16 from the line, K-State 10 of 12. Line drive for Carter quickly in off the glass. Six for Cam. Assist for Tyke Green, who cut and then stopped and basically kept the defender from being able to guard the baseline. Johnson, runner, back rim, Desi. A whirling dervish out there. Unforced air kicks it out of bounds. Never really got control of it. A lot of things happened there. You get that long rebound and you think it's a break opportunity. Good job by Johnson to force him to spin the other way. From one side of the court to the other side and then finally tapped off of his own leg. Good defense there. Sills getting in the passing lane. And there, Holman gets a little bit of freshman issue. Do not get into this part of the key and try to throw the ball over to defense to get it to the other side. That is not going to work. He's fortunate that they keep the basketball. Long rebound out to Johnson. Runner off the crossover and tipped out of bounds to K-State. What's the score? They may ask in the huddle. And the players hopefully say, I don't know. We're just playing. Keep keep the intensity up. It's hard. They're settling a little bit right here. Noel draws the foul on the reach in by Holloman. And a great free throw shooter, 85% last year. He got his right elbow up and was able to get the defender to have his hand attached. He gets three free throws. That's a veteran play against the freshman. Marquis, honorable mention, all Big 12 a year ago. 
And started tonight with better than 1,300 career points. Like you talk about K-State with 13 new players, but I mean, there's a lot of veteran guys on this team, guys who've scored over 1,000 points in their career. You got three guys over 1,000. You've got Keontae Johnson, who was the SEC preseason player of the year a couple years ago. And first team all SEC at the end of the season as well. Yeah, yeah there's it's it's there's, great to see him back on the court. Yeah, Wyatt and I were talking with Yurik after the shoot around and Yurik got a little emotional. He started talking about how he woke up this morning and what a big day it was gonna be, not only for him, but also for Keontae stepping out here on the floor for the first time. It was it was a really cool moment. Well, the love of the game, as you see a foul against Justin Johnson. The love of the game is what so many people respect, like the opportunity to play at this level. And you got Keontae Johnson, who, with the condition that he was in, that kept him out last season and for much of the previous season before, had an insurance policy in place where he would have gotten money if he would have continued to say, I can't play college basketball. But that was not what his goal and objective was. It was to say, am I healthy? I hope I'm healthy. I'd love to play again. And here he is in his first regular season game in basically two years. And uh, it is cool to see that love of the game. And with his excellence, it's cool for K-State fans to see him play ball with the purple on. Yeah, and he looks good to start the season. Boy, you look back at that sophomore year, some of the huge games, 25 and 11 against LSU, 24 and 10 Arkansas, 19 and 9 against Kentucky, 20 and 5 against Baylor. And he just had some monster games. Eight games and ten rebounds or more. I mean, he's really able to fight in the inside and rebound in addition to scoring the basketball so well. Stepped on the line. He's been able to neutralize some of the UTRGV player capabilities. And I think if you see them play down the line, you're going to see some really good play. Their point guard, Will Johnson, number four, is going to be a fine player, really run this basketball team. Young man from Australia, but boy, K-State has just been so good tonight. It's hard to see any excellence out of UTRGV other than Justin Johnson scoring it. Though. Yeah, I don't know what's been better, the offense or the defense tonight for K-State. They've both been very solid. Noel pops from 15, tip drive from the Sioux, won't drop. The dribble from Freeman. We mentioned K-State, offense, defense, but the, the other component is Coach Matt Figures not happy with that call. The other thing you gotta say is improvement. The defense has been rock solid. Uh, the offense has been very good tonight. So yes, you've answered both those checks and say well, that's good. But you know what, the thing I like is they're playing better than they did against Washburn. All the way around. Every aspect of it is an improved play. Yeah. And that is what K-State's going to need to do to fight in this Big 12 conference. What a basketball conference you have in the Big 12 this year. Desi. Unable to finish. Here comes Johnson at the other end. His runner won't fall. Rebounded by Tomlin. K-State accidentally kicks the ball out of bounds. Both teams tired. They need a little break. And we'll get one. 70 to 39. This is Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Clark, you know, that was going to be All American Caitlin Clark versus All American Aoka Lee, but unfortunately, Aoka out with the knee injury, but uh, still a great matchup. <laughs> Caitlin Clark is so fun to watch. Probably one of the most, maybe the most exciting player in women's college hoops. You know, once she crosses half court, be ready. She yeah. might be shooting the ball. She's in range. Naquan Tomlin, a little jump hook that won't fall. And let's check in with Jasmine. Hey guys, so Coach Tang was getting on his guys about not giving up transition layups and wanted them to stay locked in. And he wanted them to play with pace. And he said, and I quote, I do not want to play slow. 
Not playing slow here. Carter with the bounce pass and the finish for Tomlin. Uh, that's pretty traditional fast break right there. Get the ball in the middle of the floor, bounce pass it to one of the wings for an easy layup. Good execution. That's what Coach Tang wants. Johnston, first two of the night. Yeah, you see a little bit of how he normally plays right there. He's done a nice job of not allowing him opportunities. Yeah, he put up big numbers in their exhibition. 17 points, 10 assists, 4 rebounds, but not much tonight. K-State has suffocated him on the perimeter as Tomlin draws the foul. You see the official using his fundamentals there on the drive. Naquan Tomlin has the running shot, has some contact. It would be two shots and a foul, but if he would have made the shot, the official would have said, let's just keep playing. After the ball was missed, you get the whistle. Some people say, why is the whistle so late? Well, there's a big reason why. Well, if you haven't seen the story or heard the story, Tomlin didn't play high school basketball. Grew up in Harlem, New York, at, and playing uh, at famed Rucker Park, made famous by players like Dr. J back in the day, and uh, ended up playing AAU basketball, and then went to a couple junior colleges. And K State saw him. A couple of the guy, assistant coaches knew of him, saw the film, went to see him, and offered him the scholarship, and they've just been raving about him from day one. Another charge drawn by the Cats. Finister there. This time on C.J. Jackson. He goes right through the freshman. Offensive foul. Good defense, but you see with UTRGV, that's the kind of shot that they want him to take. You know, maybe you're going to get a charge once in a while, but boy, if you can score from there off the backboard, that's a quality shot. He's going to get an offensive foul. Slipped his arm out a little too far. And you see that there was enough to get the call because that's a big emphasis. If they felt like there wasn't a push, then that could have been considered a flop. A defensive player acting like he got pushed is going to get stopped in two, a second level technical and one shot for the team if that happens. And, oh, this is not, hopefully this is just a cramp. Johnson down. <clears throat> Williams got the putback. He's exerted a lot of energy tonight, and I saw him rubbing his calf earlier, so hopefully he doesn't end up with an injury other than just a little fluids to help a cramp out. He's too good a player in the first game of the year to have an injury. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jimmy. Justin Johnson helped to the bench. He was limping pretty heavily on that. On that foot or ankle, we're not sure exactly what it was. Hopefully nothing serious, though. She is a heck of a player for Texas Rio Grande Valley. Baby with the left hand and the finish. What a pass. With that little break in action, K-State's coaches called what they wanted. And watch Marquise Noel just throw that almost like a football pass before he'd even cut down on a pick and roll. He got the ball to Bebe. That's beautiful. Nice catch down low and finish. Seven assists on the night for the senior point guard. To go along with 11 points. Ah! A few misses from the free throw line tonight for the Cats. 21 assists for the Wildcats. Johnston threw it off, or uh, lost it. Noel threw it off of Johnston. Looks like he got him around the back of the head. Nah, I'm sure. They claim he was on the ground when the ball hit him. Otherwise, you just say play on. Because it stayed in bounds on the bounce. A little hezzy. Noel floats it to Finister. 
Naquan Tomlin well defended that time going into a double team and nowhere to go and out of bounds to K-State. Good ball movement from side to side there. Drive and pitch across the court. Guy Key. Got what they wanted with that corner three. Holloman fouled from behind, and he'll shoot two. And Matt Figure, head coach of UTRGV, got what he wanted. Fast break, ending up with a shot close to the rim, or a foul if you don't make it. They're going to have two guards that can push the ball this year. Will Johnson. Dante Holloman. Six for Holloman. Desi back in for K State. Desi will be back at the point again. The window unlucky there. Yeah, good try. Took the physicality, was able to get the ball up softly off the backboard. UTRGV playing in that WAC conference. Grand Canyon considered the best team. New Mexico State, Stephen F. Austin. Those three are expected to fight for the championship. Step through from Green, but blocked at the rim. The off-ball movement by K-State's offense been good. Zador will take the three. Way too strong and rebounded by Finister. Green leaves it for Bebe. That's where to run to the front of the rim. That's what the big guy's supposed to do. Run right down the middle, run fast and be ready, and there he was to score. And there's the flop call. That's a second-degree technical right there. It'll be called on Bebe. Timeout. Good pass. 78-44, Cats. To get used to is they don't want the team that has the Class B technical to get an advantage. So they're going to let a play finish. They may play for four or five more seconds, Ben, before they stop the action. They're going to find a natural point where the team is not disadvantaged, who is getting the advantage of the foul. They'll stop one shot, and then they go back to where they were in the game and act like that one point or that one shot did not occur. It is a big emphasis. One of the things is how long will the officials call this because there's no warning it's always been a class b technical but there used to be a warning before they would get to it so you'd never get to it this year it's one of the things the officials have been told do it or you're going to get degraded in your evaluation of trying to be an ncaa tournament official and that is very valuable for everyone that's officiating big time basketball it actually worked against the vaqueros because they got a tip in after the miss layup so they only got one point instead of two well, that's the controversy right here that has not yet been determined. They could have interpreted the tip action continue. Right. So don't be surprised if they allow that tip right. to count and then stop it. And it's one of the big discussions right now because as they're seeing the interpretation of the rule, they're going, how long should we wait for continued action? Nice face-up jumper from Bebe. Finister running the floor inside to Bebe, and he's got another one. Nice left hand. Wrap around. Off the backboard. And all of a sudden, he's our leading scorer, Stan. He's got 12. Johnson had 11 in the first half. Played a whole lot here in the second half as a reverse drop for Darius Ward. Well, the distribution the KC Wildcats have throughout their lineup on the scoring charts is pretty amazing. 
Uh, yeah, you, they've got you, nine, what, nine different guys with at least five points between five and 12. Finister, the only one who's played who hasn't scored. They've got six players who have between three and five baskets each, and only on that last shot did one go up to five. It was three or four makes by six different players. Tomlin up and under with the finish. Naquan able to step through the defender. Good control, nice finish. Not a lot of contact, but just enough to get a possible three-point play. And he's got 12 to join Bebe for team high honors here. Noel and Carter and Masood and Gasson back in. Kante Johnson waiting at the storage table. Poked away by Marquise. Good fronting of the post right there. There's the open guy. Tomlin with the tomahawk. 14 for Naquan. And now they hit him with a technical. Talking a little trash on the way back down the floor. Well, there's your other emphasis going into the season. Look how far away he jumped from the basket. Flew to the front, stuffed it home. How much do you get to celebrate? Another big discussion on how it's going to be officiated this year. And what you hear from the officials is we want to see excitement from the players, but you better do it looking at your own teammates, not calling attention to yourself, and definitely not looking at the opponents. Okay. <clears throat> and a little teaching moment there. Well, you get a, a peek into the coaching philosophy of one Jerome Tang. This guy has had a smile on his face, love in his heart for the whole K-State Nation, the players he's brought together. But what is really great is that he has a tough-minded coaching style when it comes to what his expectations are. He can do it in a positive way. But he doesn't ever just hug people and say, great job. He will let you know when you have not met expectations. There was an example. Now you get to see a young man step to the line. Alex Holrook. He's not played much. He just came in, subbed in for Dima Zador. And the reason why that is significant is Dima Zador and Alex Holrook are both from Ukraine. Two players from Ukraine on this UTRGV roster. Certainly an international flair. There's a player from Latvia as well, Australia. Matt Figger going all over the map to recruit his team. Johnson's fouled from behind on the baseline drive. The drive to the basket. You mentioned Matt Figure, he's got new players and players from a lot of different places. What's interesting is on their warm-ups, they have on a sleeve either their country's flag or the zip code of the kids from the United States. So I hadn't seen that any place else. But you can see different on the right arm. Every player's got something different representing their home both by zip code or country flag. Inside five minutes, Holloman turns the corner. Gasson there, and he draws the charge again. And Might have hit his head. Yeah. Got there good. You know, that was just excellent. 
positioning, hands in the right place, no movement, got run over, and then he took a couple steps backwards before he fell to the ground and somehow rolled all the way to the back of his head. He's going to stay in. Deontay lost it going up. Ish takes a 15-footer and leaves that short. Gasson got it back. That's a case where Ish should have been ready to shoot the ball. That three-pointer is the one you want right there. Don't pump fake and come in for a two-pointer. He may not have been ready. You only shoot when you're ready. Nice he... finish by Darius Ward, his first two in the ball game. Yeah, what UTRGV can do on offense has been muted by K-State's excellence on defense. Take a look at them and some other games you see them play, and you'll see there's a lot of guys who can play offense for this ball court. Shot clock and factor for one of the few times tonight. That's poked away from Keontae. Holloman in transition. And Johnson back there with the defense. I'll poke it away from you if you're going to poke it away from me. 3.43 to go from Bramlage on opening night. Five rebounds, three assists tonight for Desi Sills. K-State needs him to do a number of things. Play quality point guard, but also be ready. Use that experience, that competitiveness to fight as an off guard. Five second violation. And the Vaqueros will turn it over for the 24th time. How about the Wildcats with 24 assists and turn over their opponent 24 times. That'll win games. Good use of that number. Great double Marquise. Gasson flashes open. Marquise finds him, but too strong on the layup. Well, that's just great basketball. He gets double team. Look at the basket. See what is there. Sometimes your guys might be wide open. Holloman having a good game. Barry's a three. 13 now for Adante Holloman. Will he earn a starting position or will he be the guy off the bench to come in and score? <laughs> Foul before the shot. Double bonus for Marquise Noel from the free throw line. Stand with the, the three red shirts, Colbert, Thomas, in Manning, K-State has just 10 scholarship players, and so they, <laughs> they just keep bringing them in, and there's no drop-off. One through 10. A lot of good basketball players, a lot of good talent there for Jerome James. Yeah, that'll help him get into some foul trouble. Fatigue. K-State will be playing a three-game, three-day tournament in the Grand Cayman Islands in the week of Thanksgiving, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They'll need all 10 of these guys to be fresh. Green May got away with an extra step there. And now Rio Grande Valley turns it over. K-State led by 26 at half, 52-26. I think they've kept their intensity up pretty well in the second half. I think Coach Tang is demanding to think about Marquise Noel still playing right now. Expecting to run good offense. Well, you talked at halftime about how everything they had done had been an improvement from the Washburn game, and I think that's continued here in the second half because that exhibition game got pretty sloppy in the second half with a lot of unforced turnovers, and we really haven't seen that here tonight. Yeah, even in the first half as well as K-State played, there were a couple times the ball was rolling around and people were diving on the floor trying to grab it. You haven't seen that second half. It's been like you'd expect with basketball players at this level. Passing the ball, catching the ball, not losing the ball in their dribble. you got to be ready. They're going to be on the road. A whole other 
experience to go on the road and be able to keep your performances crowd was great tonight helped energize the Wildcats they came with purpose even in the warm-ups you saw a good intensity for K-State they're ready to play but coach tank talked about you want to own home court you want to have a great record at home that's why he wants the kid to be the octagon of doom he wants the students to be engaged and make a difference here this is one of the few places in the country where students sit on the side of the court and are such a big presence but then how are you going to find road wins what's it going to be like when you're wearing the purple jerseys you say we'll know on friday green with the reverse and he is fouled. Nice bounce pass by Ishmael late in the possession. Well, there's been great connectivity. You think about the Washburn game, there were some passes thrown away to the baseline, and it didn't appear that anybody was there. Here you're seeing K-State run the baseline, get the ball delivered on time to be able to get an angle to score. That's something they've definitely done better, and they've attacked that baseline. There's a nice bounce pass there, but we've also seen a lot for a dunk work as well. Crowd cheering on Lee Hatcher, who's a freshman out of Liberal, Kansas, on the Rio Grande Valley team as he checks in for the first time. And he's guarded by Nate Aubrey, a young man from Manhattan High. That's hung out at Ben Boyle's house and lost his life. <laughs> Nate is. And a great kid, and I love seeing him out here. As I said the other night, as if the suit slams it all, I've seen Nate uh, play hundreds and hundreds of soccer and basketball games playing with my oldest son, Jackson. Uh, he even played those two sports at Manhattan Christian College here in the city right across from the campus. Ward gets another one inside. If you run a highlight package of the best plays for UTRGV, you're going to see there are a few guys who can score the basketball and do things. And the competition level will not be quite as high when they move on out of the Big 12 opponent, K-State. K-State's going to win their fourth all-time, 4-0 against this school. Knowledgeable crowd, understanding that he's a kid from Kansas. Student section having a lot of fun here. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm understanding it all, but they've stayed till the end and they're into it. They're booing the players who are not passing it to the Kansan. <laughs> Give him a cheer even when he's on defense. That's state pride right there. Aubrey goes in. And 15 to play. <laughs> the students are pointing. He's in the corner. And that figure says back it up. 93 to 59. It's win number one for Tang's gang here in Manhattan. The Wildcats with 12 three-pointers on the night.